In the boundless skies above the frozen tundra, a silver shadow cuts through the air like a blade. It's not a fighter jet, nor a passenger aircraft. It's something far more formidable. The Tupolev Tu-160, known to NATO as Blackjack, is the world's largest and fastest strategic bomber, a machine so powerful it defies the very idea of what a bomber should be. Imagine a 275-ton steel beast capable of breaking the sound barrier, soaring at Mach 2, and carrying enough nuclear firepower to erase entire cities. But behind its thunderous engines and sleek white profile lies a story of rivalry, ambition, and the relentless pursuit of dominance in the skies. This is not just the tale of a bomber, it's the saga of a nation's pride, a reflection of Russia's technological prowess, and the embodiment of the Cold War's final gasp of aerospace glory. The 2160 was born in an era when the world stood on the knife's edge of nuclear confrontation. The 1970s marked a time when both the United States and the Soviet Union sought the ultimate weapon of deterrence, an aircraft that could strike anywhere on Earth faster than any interceptor could respond. The Americans had the Rockwell B-1 Lancer, a supersonic bomber with variable sweep wings and radar-evading contours. Moscow's answer needed to be more powerful, more advanced, and utterly unstoppable. Under the leadership of the legendary Soviet engineer Alexei Tupolev, the Soviet Union began developing an aircraft that would not only match but surpass its American rival. The result was the Tu-160, a masterpiece of aerospace engineering combining brute force with aerodynamic grace. Its design fused the agility of a fighter with the endurance of a bomber, powered by four massive NK-32 turbofan engines, still among the most powerful ever built. Each one produces 55,000 pounds of thrust, allowing this 54-meter-long aircraft to sprint through the stratosphere faster than the speed of sound while carrying up to 45 tons of weaponry. Unlike most bombers designed purely for stealth or endurance, the Tu-160 was designed to dominate through speed. Its philosophy, you can't hit what you can't catch. But it wasn't just speed that made the Blackjack extraordinary, it was its elegance in execution. The aircraft's variable sweep wings could shift between 20 and 65 degrees mid-flight, enabling it to adapt to any situation, extended for stable, fuel-efficient cruising, or swept back for blistering supersonic dashes. Its blended fuselage, smooth curves, and titanium reinforcements allowed it to maintain structural integrity at incredible speeds. Inside the cockpit, digital avionics and fly-by-wire systems gave pilots unprecedented control, while radar-absorbing materials provided limited stealth capabilities, a remarkable achievement for an aircraft of its size. Yet beyond its beauty lied terrifying potential. The Tu-160 could carry an array of nuclear-tipped cruise missiles, including the deadly KH-55 and the modern KH-101, capable of striking targets more than 5,000 kilometers away with precision. The aircraft's operational philosophy was simple but devastating, to deliver a sudden, unstoppable strike before vanishing into the horizon. In the realm of aerial warfare, the Tu-160 wasn't just an aircraft, it was a force of nature. The Tu-160's path to the skies, however, was anything but smooth. Its maiden flight took place in December 1981, at a time when the Soviet Union's economy was straining under the weight of military spending and political turmoil. The bomber's development was plagued by technical challenges, delays, and fierce competition among Soviet design bureaus. 
Yet when the first blackjack finally roared into the sky, it silenced its critics. Western analysts were stunned. This was not a crude, outdated Soviet machine. This was an aircraft that could match or even outclass anything in the American arsenal. When it entered operational service in 1987, the 2160 became the symbol of Soviet might. But history soon took a dramatic turn. The fall of the Soviet Union in 1991 shattered the production line, leaving only a handful of aircraft completed. Many were stranded in Ukraine after the collapse, later returned to Russia in exchange for debt relief. For years, the 2160's future seemed uncertain, until the Russian Federation revived the fleet in the 2000s, restoring these giants to operational status with modern avionics, precision missiles, and upgraded engines. This resurrection marked not just the return of a bomber, but the reawakening of Russia's aerospace pride. The 2160's legacy was solidified not by war, but by presence. Its very existence became a statement of power. During military exercises and international patrols, these bombers often appeared over the Arctic, Atlantic, and Pacific Oceans, shadowed by NATO fighters. The thunder of their engines became the heartbeat of Russian deterrence. Pilots who flew them described the experience as commanding a flying cathedral, immense, loud, and alive with energy. The cockpit, though cramped compared to Western standards, was meticulously designed for endurance missions that could last over 15 hours, often involving aerial refueling. In 2015, the 2160 demonstrated its modernized precision by launching long-range cruise missiles against terrorist targets in Syria, showing that even in the 21st century, a machine conceived in the Cold War could still deliver devastating accuracy. It was a message to the world. The blackjack was not a relic. It was a living symbol of Russia's enduring might. When compared to its rivals, the 2160 stands apart as a paradox, both ancient and modern, simple yet sophisticated. The American B-1 Lancer, though similar in appearance, was designed with more emphasis on stealth and low-altitude penetration. The B-2 Spirit, on the other hand, relied almost entirely on stealth and subsonic flight. The 2160 took a different path. It embraced speed and range as its armor. Where the B-2 hides, the blackjack outruns. Where the B-1 sneaks, the blackjack intimidates. Its mission philosophy reflects Russian military doctrine itself, overwhelming force and psychological domination. Yet despite these differences, both nations pursued the same goal, maintaining strategic balance through deterrence. The blackjack, though not invisible to radar, remains unmatched in raw performance. Even today, no operational bomber on Earth can match its combination of payload, speed, and range. It is the apex predator of the bomber world, a title it holds with quiet confidence and roaring engines. Behind the brilliance of the 2160 lies a human story of visionaries, engineers, and aviators who dared to dream beyond the limits of physics. Designers at the Tupolev Bureau worked under immense pressure, racing against time and politics to create something that would redefine strategic aviation. Many of them spent their lives in secrecy, unknown to the public, their work hidden behind state security walls. Test pilots risked their lives pushing the aircraft to its limits, enduring extreme G-forces and unknown flight behaviors at supersonic speeds. One such pilot, Boris Viremi, famously described his first supersonic run as riding lightning in metal form. Even the political decisions behind the bomber's survival were marked by tension and nationalism.
Leaders like Vladimir Putin later championed its modernization as a symbol of national resurgence. Every screw, every weld in the 2160 tells a story not only of technology, but of perseverance, sacrifice, and pride. Today, the 2160 is being reborn once again. Russia has begun producing a new variant, the 2160 M2, featuring digital avionics, upgraded NK32-02 engines, and extended service life for decades to come. It represents both nostalgia and innovation, a bridge between the past and the future. In a world now shifting toward stealth bombers like the American B-21 Raider and undrone drones, the 2160 stands as a defiant symbol of human strength and mechanical might.